Hello, this is Jonathan Srobotis, and today I'll be guiding you through a selection of the most useful tools and features available in Dynamics the Wizard 2.0. To start the firmware recovery process, select the recovery icon third from the left near the top of the menu in Dynamics the Wizard 2.0. This opens the Dynamics the Firmware Restoration Wizard and displays a warning message reminding you to keep the servo connected through the entire process and ensure that only one servo is connected. After continuing, you'll be presented with a screen to select the appropriate model of the Dynamixel you're restoring. In order to prevent any issues with your Dynamixel, it's important to select the correct model. Afterwards, you'll be prompted to select the specific firmware version you wish to restore. Sometimes, multiple versions will be available, but unless you have a specific reason, you should always choose the latest one. The following screen prompts the choice of the COM port that has your Dynamixel servo connected. If you aren't sure which COM port your servo is connected to, you can select one you think is correct, try it, and see if it's found. There's no harm in trying again with a different setting. Then, you'll be prompted to disconnect the power from your Dynamixel, give it a few seconds, and then start it up again. If your power supply has a switch, you can use that to toggle power off, then back on for this step. If you don't have a switch, you can unplug the Dynamixel cable and reinsert it. After power cycling, the Dynamixel wizard will begin the firmware restoration process. After it's completed, we will reset to default settings with a fresh version of your selected firmware. Dynamixel ID inspection provides a simple method to quickly assign unique ID numbers to an entire network of connected Dynamixel actuators. To use the tool, open it using the ID inspection option from the tool drop-down menu. The first step in the ID inspection process is to choose the correct communication settings for your Dynamixel network. While the names of the available communication ports will differ depending on your computer, the default baud rate for new Dynamixel systems is 57600 and should be selected by default. After choosing the correct options for your Dynamixel setup, there will be a short pause as the wizard scans your connected Dynamixels. During this process, any units that are detected will have their assigned IDs displayed in the box below the progress bar. Once the scan has been completed, the next menu displays a list of all the detected Dynamixels, which any overlapping units highlighted in red. Here, you can assign new IDs to these overlapping servos by selecting them from the list. When you select a servo using the menu on the left, the LED on the unit will blink so that you can identify the specific servo and assign the correct ID. Once all the IDs have been chosen from the menu to the right and saved to the servos, the ID inspection is complete and your servo should be detected correctly by your chosen controller. Dynamixel servos support backup and restoration of selected control table items, including all EEPROM memory locations, PID and fee forward games, profile acceleration and velocity, as well as all indirect address locations. The process of backing up your Dynamixel firmware in the wizard is simple. All you need to do is select the backup option from the control table backup menu in the tools dropdown. Once the backup has been created, the backup ready control table item on your Dynamixel servo will change to 1 indicating that the control table has been written to the dedicated backup area in your Dynamixel. Restoration of the firmware is similarly easy. Select Restore EEPROM area from the control table backup in the tools drop-down menu to restore the persistent memory of your Dynamixel. Restoration of the RAM area is enabled by toggling on the RAM restoration option in the startup configuration control table item. With this option enabled, your Dynamixel will restore the RAM control table items every time the server reboots. Dynamixel self-diagnosis is a simple tool allowing you to perform basic functions tests and ensure that your servos are operating correctly. Self-diagnosis can be started through the self-diagnosis option in the tools drop-down. After reading and accepting the warnings and confirming that your servo was correctly detected by the Dynamixel wizard, the servo will display a list of shutdown statuses so you can quickly confirm if any of these are affecting your servo. If the self-diagnosis reports any of these conditions, you should first investigate the cause of the error and resolve it before continuing. The next page prompts you to input your current room temperature. If possible, you should input the correct temperature for the most accurate temperature monitoring possible. But if you aren't sure, it's safe to leave it at default. Afterwards, the wizard will request you specify your current input voltage. This should automatically be set to the voltage currently being delivered to the servo. But in the case the pre-selected option is incorrect, you should check and adjust it based on your actual input voltage. Once it's been confirmed, the Dynamixel LED will blink so you can confirm that it's functioning correctly. Follows well with the LED, then 
Make sure your server is in a safe position before proceeding to the next step. Once you continue, the server will move to its zero position and prompt you to confirm the alignment with a small dot on the output horn facing directly upwards. Once you've confirmed whether or not the server is calibrated correctly, it will perform a quick position control test to measure the accuracy of movement and general motion before performing a similar test for rotation speed and accuracy. After these two function tests have been completed, you'll be shown a screen displaying a summary of the complete results of your diagnosis. Dynamixel calibration is an important step in the gear replacement process, allowing you to reset the sensor position of servos after a new set of gears has been installed. Calibration is started by selecting the calibration option from the tool drop-down menu. After reading and accepting the warnings, you'll be prompted to install the calibration firmware by resetting your Dynamixel actuator. If your power supply features an on-off switch, Follow the power this way to initiate the reset. Otherwise, unplug the Dynamixel cable and reinsert it to achieve the same result. Once the calibration firmware has been installed, attach the adjustment tool included with your replacement Dynamixel gear set to your Dynamixel output gear, and move the dock to the position indicated on the screen. This process will be repeated four times to confirm the accuracy of the four cardinal directions for your Dynamixel's encoder. Once that's completed, your Dynamixel will be fully calibrated. For more information on Dynamics servos or other components, check out the Robotis online e-manual. Documentation and source code for our many open source projects is available on the Robotis official GitHub. If you have any questions, or you'd just like to talk about your Dynamics projects, feel free to pop in on the official Robotis community forum. This has been Jonathan with Robotis, and I look forward to building more with you soon.